You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's chosen after show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's chosen after show. Sometimes your friends let you down. Take your dream. Yo, yo, and yo. On the ground. <laughs> what do I do? Turn we are here with the Chosen. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. The inaugural episode or inaugural season, episode eight, entitled Boys Night. I'm Scott Moore, and we've got our special guest, Drew Drew Drogi here. You got in it the right. House. That's I know. awesome. It was almost like a tongue twister there. Um, I saw you tense up a little bit. It's I like, did. Oh, I was like, they got it right. You got it okay, totally let me right. Sure I, let me sure I get it right here. Yes. <laughs> and of course, the uh, one I'm only Zach Wilson. That's right. Zach back is here. Always, back We're missing um, Greg and Roya. Yeah, they're party too hard at the club tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so you know they got to rest. Greg, <laughs> Greg went to uh, cathedral. cathedral. Roya yeah. went to uh, the the mozzarella. Well, the, the, the oyster. Uh, mozzarella dicks. Mozzarella, mozzarella dicks. dicks. Yeah. They both were confused why they were there. Right. And, uh, As were most of the clientele <laughs> at both of those bars, I think. They, they, most people are confused at those places. Yeah, so Drew, you did uh, a couple voices on tonight's episode. There were I a did. lot of new characters there that were, so, were introduced to us tonight. So many new characters, and um, I was happy to to see um, so much of the LGBT community represented yes. <laughs> tonight. Yeah. Um, yeah, seriously, it was it was a blast. Yeah, I was the voice. I, I came in at the end. I was two characters. Uh, Maurice de Maurier, the older Quentin Crisp <laughs> character yes. who was full with a poodle and, you know, the, the um, chapeau. And the, and the, afo, the, the ascot, ascot and everything, and everything I mean, going on. It was completely, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I also was Chadwick, who was the uh, African-American, which I, you know, I'm just happy to branch out and yeah. play a different race than myself, than my own race. <laughs> and because um, I believe it or not, I'm not. I'm not black. I wouldn't have not. Um, I'm I have to. T- I have I would to not constantly. Have I constantly right. have to tell people you have that. To tell people that. I understand. You know. Um, it's it's really hard for me. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, anyway, so yeah. So I did those two. They those really experiences. went like all out, balls to the wall. Yeah, they that. sure they did. Just like because to this point, it's been fairly. <laughs> Uh, it's weird that I think that it's been tame, but comparatively to oh. this episode, everything they've done <laughs> up no, this, this is, has this been... is thanks to the brilliant Ryan Shiraki who wrote this episode, who is a genius. Seriously. And when I got this, we recorded this a few months ago before the show went to air. So mm-hmm. I didn't, I hadn't read any of the other episodes. I didn't know the tone of it. And I read this, I read this and I was like, this is the most brilliant <laughs> groundbreaking. <laughs> I mean, just because it's, so wrong, it's beautiful. Right. It's, it's so. <laughs> oh, I mean, there are so many blowjob reference mm-hmm. jokes. There's so many, and there are references to. I mean, there are references to what is the play that I that I did at the Coronet, and I, just, I talk about Salminio. I talk about AIDS. I mean, everything is a fair, fair game, mm-hmm. and it's in a brilliant world of like, yeah, let's go there, let's right. do it. Yeah. And it was hilarious. Yeah. It's so funny. And oh, so I was I so happy to get to do it because I love Ryan and Grant DeCurry, Grant DeCurnian, who created the show and is just who's incredible. And um, Bobby Moynihan and everybody's oh, great. Yeah. So I was excited to get to do all that. Now, when you went in to actually record, you went in by yourself? By myself, And you were just yeah. doing those two different roles? Yeah. Because I know that happens a lot, so it's it's it it you know it's it's a it's a really cool thing to see how much energy you have to have and everything to make it work. Yeah, because you're not able to play off of the other. Yeah, you, you have know, to kind of go in there, and and also like on a brand new show, you don't really know the tone. And I read exactly. this, and it was so awesomely yeah. like I'm like these kind of jokes, you know. These are jokes that you you know you you do for internet shows and your friends projects and you go this is but this is like gonna be on TV this is mm-hmm. awesome mm-hmm. how far can we go and the perform and they were just like big loud committed over the you know and and um, so it it all cut together really nicely but no I didn't get to work with any of the other actors in the booth but they were they were so confident in what they were doing and they were all so much fun to work with that you know 
You just figure. Just yeah, exactly. Let's do it. Had Let's you seen Had you seen any of the show when you recorded? No, because it was before it had, it had gone to air. So, and I wow. and I saw. I remember when I saw the the first episode. I was like, that was so funny. That's so great. And mm-hmm. I was like, mine is so much crazier than the first one. <laughs> no, you're it's, absolutely right. I was just gonna say that. It's like it feels like as we've moved along, it's just gotten a little bit edgier and crazier. Yeah. Each it's episode sort, now kind of like, ones, one. Uh, I mean, Onion Pussy. Right. That was on TV <laughs> tonight, you guys. Exactly. What? <laughs> that was on national yes. television. <laughs> uh, I'm all for it. I'm I'm really I, proud. To I have agree. Been a part of it. I really am. I think it's wonderful. No, I agree, and I, I think we've talked about this from the beginning. Is that it's such a different look uh, at the LGBT community yeah. than what we've ever seen before. Yeah, exactly, and it's not lazy. You no, know what I mean? And that's all. what's so great about it. It's it's smart. It, mm-hmm. it, it, I, I love anything that's going to be raunchy. And it's why I have, I mean, I'm a, a lifer John Waters fan because yeah. John Waters is really smart as, mm-hmm. as raunchy and crazy and trashy. And it's just like this. It's like yeah. you're going to watch something and go, there's a voice here. It's not just Absolutely. like for shock or what's easy. Mm-hmm. And I think what's so annoying about so many gay jokes is that they just go for the obvious mm-hmm. Dude, that's so gay, and that's like the joke about it all, or like you like it in the butt or whatever. I don't know how much I can I say on here. Hi, sorry, Maria. <laughs> um, but it's like you know, and then this is a show about like a real person and a real world, and it is the uh, people who live gay, straight, whatever. Mm-hmm. They live on the edge. They live on the curb, you know. And thank God for them. No, and and, it, and it's like unapologetically, yeah, edgy. But again, because there's a reason behind it, like you were saying, there, there's a whole reason behind it. They're not just doing it for the shock value. And uh, I, I think it's it's just so well done. Like, it's just well, they're impressed not, me. They're not like doing a, it for the shock value, but it sense. is shock humor. Yes, it is shock at, humor. At, at its finest. Because they're, they're not just trying to su- like surprise you with something yeah. horrifying. Exactly. They're trying to surprise you with something that you just don't get to mm-hmm. see on television yes, exactly. in any other way. And that's something right. that Chosen has done. It's sort of, television sort of built to this over the years like mm-hmm. just with more and more absurdity mm-hmm. and more mm-hmm. and more insanity on television this is sort of the embodiment mm-hmm. of it we've gotten like these got like the they've done a little bit of this with archer with just like the insanity exactly but yeah. this is a, with this premise just lets mm-hmm. them just go in a completely different mm-hmm. direction yeah to say the least i oh, know absolutely and, I, and and again like just the animation and everything is the fact that you can be a little bit with the visuals and some mm-hmm. of the other things that are going mm-hmm. on. You get to have a whole other level, and then you get to play characters that you wouldn't right. be able to I play mean, in like, every I, day. So I mean, you get right. to be edgier and crazier. I got to play characters. someone of a different race yeah. and someone who is 40 years older than me. I was going to say 50, but okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, that becomes – and cartoons can always get away with so much mm-hmm. more, and I think that's why, you know, why South Park and – you mm-hmm. know, Family Guy and Simpsons and all those shows have always been able to be ahead of that curve because, you know, the people are like, well, it's not really people, but they're really progressive and, mm-hmm. um, you know, and funny. And it, at the end of the day, that's really all we want. Anybody wants to watch. They want to be right. entertained. You want to be entertained. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think it's great. It's great for, you know, this demo and, and for you know, FX for people to have this this outlet here. So it's 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 awesome. Yeah, I think Chosen sums it up like all this that we've been talking about. Yeah. And everyone and he sums up the viewing audience for this show in one in one one sentence. This is the weirdest crew I have ever <laughs> rolled with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Well speaking of that, I mean we had uh, you know, we'll start breaking down the episode a little bit. I mean, what did you guys think first impressions of the episode tonight? Besides, you know, all the crazy <laughs> we just talked about with, with you know, the different types of people they brought in. Um, that the video, club. that montage, that gorgeous, candy-colored, crazy, filth, gumball. <laughs> yeah, the insane, icing. The icing. <laughs> icing squirting on the gingerbread man. I was like, oh, my God. The candy, like, <laughs> coming the, out of the coin machine, yes. guys. Oh, uh, Yeah. <sighs> Oh, More so of good. that, please. Right, <laughs> and the rap was great tonight too. I wish I had gotten yeah, down the, all the the rap the was words. really good. I couldn't even. It was going so fast, yeah. and I was just laughing. I couldn't get any of it down. But yeah. it is good. Like it's good. It's fun. Good rap. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. and that's what this show has been. Mm-hmm. That's is that they've it's solid raps with good lyrics, mm-hmm. absurd lyrics, absolutely. <laughs> Absurd, but, but often horrifying. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> but they come but at you lyrics. so fast, and there's so much visual. You really have to, you have to like pause mm-hmm. it and slow it down to even like, what did they just say to me? And like, you, you know, that's good. 
Yep. Good stuff. So we had the night where, you know, Ricky and Crisco go to Mozzarella Dicks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no longer a restaurant. Now it's a strip club. Mm-hmm. And they have oysters. They yeah, have a buffet. The, yeah, with have oyster, and the clams and all the... And shellfish. It, and, and the thing that, that was cracking me up before is I already get uncomfortable thinking about going to a strip club and eating there. So I was already at the uncomfortable level, and they helped to bring that out and by I saying, why that's at most clams strip clubs. They, right. have, they have, like, taco bars know, and, and, like, buffets. Ugh, and I've and never sort of like, understood that. I don't under- get that either. Be like, oh, great, there's nachos here? Yeah. <laughs> All right. At least nachos Game is, on. like, chips and cheese pretty pretty simple. But you're still looking at, you're like, look- naked yes, people. You're exactly. still looking at, like, you know. My God, I have a very big fear of that, and at least they at least acknowledge my fear today when when they mention the clams and everything because I do feel very not sure clams at a titty bar is the best thing. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Well, it's bad enough when you think about a hair being in your food, but then you're thinking about it in this food too, and you're like, oh. And and, and where do they get these clams? Like obviously, <laughs> no. we're not going to some high end. You know, we're not at like Eleni Oyster Bar in Silver well, Lake. Who knows? We're who knows? going they... to like you know this is like bottom of the bar. You know this is. Elfville. They might have a very nice clientele that (laughs) wants good oysters and clams, and they just they pay top dollar. They want their classy shellfish. (laughs) Yet they hire onion pussy to work. I know. Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer. Yeah, I yes. thought I thought so, they were gonna go with like a clams joke. Yeah, there. I did too. I did too. Actually, that was no. the thing at the end when he said, "Oh, what's that smell?" I thought they were gonna go there as well. No, but no. They, 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 went on, they went somewhere else, yeah, which also surprises they, you. Yeah, not they lazy. Exactly, they're Different. not lazy. They are they not lazy with, on this show. With the easy joke there, mm-hmm. they went with something completely different. Yeah, what was her name like? She called herself Cayenne. 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 Yeah, color. Jennifer, but she was by Cayenne. And then, aka Onion Pussy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, not, not just say like it, everybody. Yeah, just say just it. Say let it. it. Let it happen. It's, it's it rolls it's off the tongue so easily. Liberating. It Onion is. pussy. <laughs> See? See how easy that is. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> Never did I think those two words would come in succession. Not only broadcast on oh. national television, but out of my mouth. Right. <laughs> no, I didn't. Ex- I didn't drive here tonight expecting to say that. No. Either one of those words, but I'm happy we, to. And, but here we are. <laughs> so there they were at the uh, at the club, and then we had the whole issue with uh, which was funny too with Crisco with his girlfriend yelling at him, and yeah, which I think he was justified in to be mad. Yeah, he's out like yes, this is a weird way to go about it, but it's a, the rap game is not an easy That's right place to go. It's I not mean, an easy life. Yeah, so he has, he has to do thug life. I mean, according to Tupac, it's a thug mm-hmm. life. And we're sort we're sort of finding out like not just is he like sub, like subservient to her right. she like really has control she totally over has the control <laughs> uh, she made me dinner last night yeah. well she bought the food and i cooked it for her but she did the dishes i just had to put them away <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no she can be one of those characters that we'd never really see I, that's what i'm wondering if it's I one of those types oh, we have gonna, not seen her yet no we haven't even heard her voice except no. this was the most we've heard exactly. of her voice was the little was that little in the like ear. yelling mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think we're gonna they're gonna keep holding off and holding off to build her up yeah. to this ca- like until we just like need to find out and then we're gonna see her and either she's going to be this horrifying woman that makes no sense uh-huh. for him to be <laughs> with, but in the best way. I don't know. Or, that, that, that's what I'm predicting. Yeah. That's... Okay. We, I was gonna say we could we could talk about. It, but I don't I'm have wondering or. because I. I'm beginning to think that maybe they will never show her as sport, part of the whole thing of keeping the mystery there. Sort of like Howard's mom from Big Bang Theory. Yeah, and I was thinking mm-hmm. of the other, what was the other show too? I can't even think of it now. Muppet but, Babies. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I'm, of course. Muppet Nanny. <laughs> that was it. Wasn't it Nanny on yeah. Muppet Babies? You just saw her Start, feet. Her feet you saw her, her legs. stockings. Yeah, her, yep. Yep, that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't even going to go there, but that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, you never thought you'd compare Muppet Babies and Chosen. I know. But <laughs> that happened. Me, either, me either, but I'm just, I'm just ugh, I don't know, I'm just open and yeah. um, telling a story. It just, it just all flows <laughs> when you're open. Yep. <laughs> But I could take that. I was pure gen, by the way, pure gen. Wasted right now. I was glad to see them return to the to the rap game, Mm -hmm. like to that storyline, because we've missed it for a few weeks. Other Mm -hmm. than having the the weekly rap sequence, Mm -hmm. they haven't been pushing the career, which is the part that like I was really having fun with at the beginning. We still don't have Method Man back or or, uh, Phantasm. Phantasm Phantasm's still missing from the scenes, but. 
they're at least like starting to try to push their careers yeah. again. This one was like, I don't think we could have ever predicted this because this didn't focus on college or on the rap career. This was totally different. It was just a night out with the boys. <laughs> night so, out, boys out night. The boys, and, boys night. Now moving, you know, with with chosen and and uh, going out with Hunter to Cathedral. I, I mean, I, what did you think about that? Did you think it was a good uh, showcase of all the different? types of gays that are out oh, there i mean absolutely. that was the thing i thought was really kind of interesting is yeah. how many people they put out there they and... really did they really did they they covered the bear community they mm-hmm. carry they covered uh they there were a lot of asian top jokes yes. uh the, you know I there was, like i was like that's a rare thing a rare thing an asian <laughs> top um so there's a lot of that it was very specific it was something mm-hmm. that i would love to show that and be like how many of these things did you just do a random you know audience and mm-hmm. people like what did they get you know um so yeah i mean it, it definitely covered a lot um and it just sort of an equal opportunity offender which i love too right. sort of like everyone's stupid when they go to the mm-hmm. club i think mm-hmm. that was the point of the show tonight was like yeah. everyone's an idiot yep nobody knows what they're doing <laughs> you're you're going to this place you're drinking you're acting a fool yep. you're trying to go home with somebody that you're not gonna it's not gonna go down well like mm-hmm. it might be hot tonight but tomorrow it's gonna be horrible right you know and so and, and every and, and 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 everyone's at a different level of hot. Like chosen yeah. is hot to some people, and to others he's gross. Mm-hmm. And then w- the group that he meets, the two characters that I voice, um, you know, are like too gross to of him. O- what did he call us? The the league what, of leave a, a, extra repugnant what, men. What was it? I know. I just wrote the actual title down. <laughs> I realized it was uh, what League of, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. It was something like yeah. that. But it's like so, and that's very true in the gay clubs. It's like you yeah. know the, the hierarchy of attraction and mm-hmm. like who is going to be you know hot enough to you know this and that, which was really fun because it's sort of like you all look terrible. Yeah, in a, in a hilarious. Way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and I think you brought up that good point. Is like everyone's trying to feel like they're so attractive and they're uh-huh. looking for these perfect uh-huh. people and. As I squeeze into my green shirt, yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling very self-conscious today man. because I'm like, like trying to be in this, and I'm thinking, okay, I feel like that guy that, that you know was at the club there and, and chosen was being such a rude kind of dick. You know, too. comedy is a corrective, Scott. Yeah. We like we see ourselves in these characters, yeah. but no, it's true. No, it's I do. Like, I you was... see these people and you go, oh my god, that's you know. I'm like, that's me. Oh, but I've for, been that. For anyone who's been on that side of like a party or like a club or anything where you're not cool enough to get mm-hmm. in, not attractive enough to get in, the idea that you could just gather all the people that have been rejected that was and yes. bum rush yes. the door Absolutely. and like have a coup and take over. <laughs> How great is that? I know. So great. A victory for not only the strange bizarre yeah. LGBT yeah. community that gathered outside, <laughs> but nerds and fat yep. guys everywhere. Yep. Everybody yep. unite. Take mm-hmm. over the club. Yeah, that was fantastic. I again, I love the fact that they they did that. Although, I, did you feel that chosen just seemed a little more dickish? Also, yeah, in this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he in some of the past he episodes. Really, he really went out there to like be an asshole. To yeah, cho- to to hunter. Yeah, hunty to hunty. hunty. I love that. That was fantastic. Um, but mm-hmm. I guess that was to really drive him away. Yeah, and maybe teach chosen a lesson. It like to finally show him like. You can't do this to mm-hmm. people. Although I like that he kind of just decided he blames it on Hunter at the end of it. At the yeah, end, he's I know. Just like, I'm like, come he on. wasn't ready for a committed relationship. Right. <sighs> and that's the one we've been talking about. You know, obviously it's been chosen that has not been ready for that. And yeah. and we saw bits of that when they were talking about, you know, marriage and everything at the club there. And he's like, oh, why would anyone want to do that? You know, mm-hmm. so it's obviously, you know, he has his own issues we've talked about since the first episode. But I just found it, was he trying to purposely be that way because he felt like he had to be the big, tough guy in this club because this wasn't his environment that he's used to? Um, yeah. No, I think he just wanted to get laid. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, so I'm overthinking it then. Isn't it? Yeah, no, I, yeah, I got the sense that he just was there and he was sort of ignorantly, had no idea yeah. okay. that it would ever be, you know, um you know that that these guys like there could be a genuine connection and love other than mm-hmm. just hot sex. Mm-hmm. You know, so why would they want to get married? That's right. crazy, right? You know, yeah. I mean, we've also seen to this point in the season, like all of the like gay communities that he's interacted with, he's been like been able to be top dog with no sure. effort. Mm-hmm. This is finally he is at the bottom, yeah. not in that sense but in he can't even be the bottom right sure <laughs> sure those words mean different things they do yeah, exactly they do, they do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. i'm just gonna drink my water now <laughs> i'm not even gonna try to continue with that i'm gonna go train oh. of thought yeah but it was but it was it is 
he didn't really grow at the end of the episode. He pretended to grow because mm-hmm. he needed to be big in front of his boys later. Right. That later on. Do you on. think he thought he grew? Do you think he thinks he grew at the end? Or do you th- or not? I don't I, know. Is he lying know. enough to himself? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Now I'm thinking of like now we're deep thoughts. Uh, maybe he, <laughs> in a subconscious level, may, might have grown. Yeah, but I don't think he thinks he grew. He because he blames somebody else, and he says like, yeah, he, didn't no, he to, definitely he didn't feels he's right. He definitely yeah. is right the whole time, yeah. which was really fun. <laughs> I love I love any time a character learns the wrong lesson or <laughs> they oh, think that they grow. I mean, you know, it's like absolutely, you know. Yeah. do it it's great you know <laughs> charlie's theron and um young adult you know a character yeah. who's just like oh i oh i le- oh i grew mm-hmm. and it's like oh no you didn't no. you actually learned <laughs> yeah, all the you're, wrong you're, things you're, you're moving backwards and i now. love a movie i love anything mm-hmm. that's gonna make that co- you know so this was yeah, really the fun uncomfortableness time. yeah i thought just the pacing of this entire episode was just it just kept going there it was, was really so fast. much in it yeah, yeah there was so Quick much so yeah. much going on sure. too so yeah but um, so what's going on in your world, Drew? Like I oh, know, gosh. not looking has uh, been doing pretty well, right? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. We the did, second one just came out. Right? Second one just came out. Yeah, mm-hmm. our parody of the show Looking, mm-hmm. which um, we have we shot five of those, and they're gonna come out. I think on Sunday nights. I think that's kind of the 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 goal that they set up. I mean, okay, I'm not good. editing it. I'm not in charge of it. So I'm I'm saying that, but I know that they're difficult to sort of do on your own. So that these guys are, but they're working so hard. And doing it, and so yeah, we're we're getting a lot of attention with that. So that's that's going Fantastic. on, and yeah, just like bopping along, doing whatever. I mean, I'm a I'm a whore. I'll do it all. I'm like <laughs> jumping around. I'm like, yes, I'll be there. Yeah, tell it's me, like I'll me. be there. I'll do it. You know, yeah. So um, yeah, I'm just trying to stay busy and you know bopping along, doing a lot of live theater in L.A., which has been a lot of fun, a lot of comedy and crazy shows. I perform at the basement of a Mexican restaurant in Silver Lake called the Casita del Campo. Oh, yeah. So yeah. have you been there before? Yes, I have. Oh, awesome. Yes. I don't know if you know Julie Brown, um, Earth Girls Are Easy and Clueless. Yeah. And, um, I, know, and I mean, I know who she is. You know, but yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's brilliant and she's, she's written a musical of The Homecoming Queen's Got a Gun, which was her popular song in the 80s. So I'm doing awesome. that. Fantastic. You know, so Saturday nights, if you're if, right, in the Silver Lake area of LA. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, oh, opening Friday, Saturday, the end of, oh, end of March, if you're in LA and Fantastic. around and looking for great Mexican food and yes. strong ass margaritas and yes. lots of wigs. <laughs> yes. Sounds like I'm, I'm there. Yeah. End of the month. I am there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what do you think, guys? Uh, predictions now? Yeah, we let's do it. Figure out what we think is going to happen here mm. in the future. And now, your After Buzz TV. As we all sip at the same time. Well, you've yes. got to be, you know, quenched here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got to th- it helps Our to think. Our mouths need to be properly uh, lubed. It does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As I, gotta uh, my I think we're going to finally hat. see some progress in the rap career. Okay. Before mm. the end of the season. I'm not sure how many episodes we have left. But the, what surprised me in this in this episode was that the rap producer thought it was good. So it kind of clears up whether, like, where we've been on this, like, mm-hmm. is it good or, or, or are they not? terrible? It yeah. is good. Yeah. They're just terrible people. <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah. Yes. Good point. Pretty much. Like, he would have signed, he, he might have signed yeah. them if one, if, he, if one, one of them wasn't being accused of rape and the other wasn't wearing a gimp suit at the time. <laughs> it's all because of that. Otherwise, they would have been, they would have been set. Mm-hmm. Murder, Murder, Sex would be the next big, right. big hit. Number, number one, one. <laughs> yeah, number one on <laughs> number top one of the, the charts. charts. I, would, I would download that on iTunes. I mean, come on, Murder, Absolutely. Murder, Sex, Sex. Come on. I already did. Well, I, <laughs> you're like already did. I've Google. I've like looked you? it up. I actually, I don't know if you can. I've just looked like, it up on YouTube ringtone. to listen to it. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> All right. Well, I'd like to predict that uh, your character Maurice comes back, and I think he should be dating. <laughs> You should be dating chosen, so that way you can oh, be working. Oh yes! Well, Let's I would get, love look that. How fantastic would that be? That would be um, a blast. I would love that. And how weird would that yeah. be? The two worlds together. <laughs> exactly. This sort of old stage manager of days of political gay yes. theater dating this rap yeah, star prison ex con. How fun would that be? I would be on board. I would hands down do it. That yeah. would be yeah. an interesting turn for the character. Right. Yeah, well, let's be. make it happen, writers. Not Come at on, all. at least not for an episode all. or two. You know what? I mean, Come I know. On. I know he's not chosen's type, but I mean. I mean, look at him. Could be. He's just a, a violet. That's right. So he he you know, went through Stonewall, Nita Bryant, two he, bushes, uh-huh, and a virus. All of it, of, he did all it all. All of it. Come on. Come on. He could teach There's Chosen so much. that he can't do now. I'm just saying, right? 
I'm saying I'm make it happen, right. writers. <laughs> but I wonder Thank if you. he will. I don't. I don't think it's the end of Hunter. I don't think it's in the Hunter and Chosen in their relationship too. Uh-huh. Maybe he'll break up with Maurice. Sorry, but you know. Oh, well, he hasn't even move started on. dating well, Maurice. Just, yet, I've already, Scott. I've already had him start a date, and now they're breaking up, and okay. now he's going to end up getting back with Hunter. Yeah, that, I, mm-hmm. I could see Hunter coming back. They sort of established him as a. He's kind of a regular. Main, I mean, regular. I think he's yeah. I think he's definitely in not quite a regular character, but yeah. definitely recurring. So I think yeah. he'll be back, and I think mm-hmm. it'll be part of the learning process for Chosen to be able to you know, finally realize that he made a mistake and learn how to be in a relationship since he's really never had that before. Yeah. So that'll be part of his growing as well. Mm-hmm. I predict that the the league of uh, dis, dis, <laughs> dis, wonderfully, dis wonderful gentlemen and onion pussy are going to open their own bar of rejects. And uh, I love it. <laughs> as we're chosen. The island of misfit out. toys. Yeah, open, yeah, exactly. I think that's what's going to happen. Gonna and they're going to all have, and it's going to be like, if you're pretty, you do not get in. Yes, that would be um, that would be awesome too. Come on, yeah. there's so many great yeah. ideas right here. Come on, <laughs> fantastic. I love it. All right, guys. Well, uh, this has been fun. Yeah. Where can they find you guys? Let the let the people at home know where they can find you. You can find me on Twitter at Drew Drogi. What's happening? Oh, it's right just now? the music. It's okay, okay. It's you're all right. I'm, I'm like, what's <laughs> happening? I'm getting played off. Yes, you are. Uh, at Drew Drogi. D R E W D R O E G E. And we can go from there. Once you talk to me on Twitter, I'm pretty easy. Oh, yeah, you are. And, yeah. Uh, do you want to remind people where they can uh, see your show? Yeah, my show is at the Casita del Campo in, uh, in Silver Lake. And you can get tickets on um, brownpapertickets.com. And uh, not looking, uh, probably. Could not looking is on Funny or Die, so you can check that out mm-hmm. as well. All of it. Fantastic. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll hear about all of it. I'm Zach. Uh, I'm Zach Wilson. You can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson, and also here at AfterBuzz on. Uh, Grim, uh, Archer, Helix, and uh, Resurrection. So yeah, you're basically living here these days, Zach. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm not Matt Lieberman. I only do five. <laughs> and and you can find me on the old Twitter at sman80. That's sman80. And on Sunday nights uh, for the Cosmos After Show. So thank you so much. Thank you, Drew, for being thanks here. Thanks for having me. Thanks so a much. lot of thanks fun, for guys. Yeah. And thanks. awesome job on the on the characters. Yay! Thanks. Yay. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 